Today I want to talk a little bit about how I would learn programming or approach programming if I had to do it all over again. Uh, this is because you know I feel that the way I learned programming was not the most efficient approach and in hindsight if I had to start over again I would do so many things differently. The number one step is I would uh, choose the programming language better because when I was learning to program first I learned the basics in C then I learned object oriented programming in C++ then I learned Java so you know, it was really this mix of shifting from one programming language to another and because C did not have support for object oriented programming so um, instead if I had chosen something like JavaScript or Python then you know I could have learned everything using one programming language so definitely if you're in 2021 uh, or you know if you're learning programming today you have a wider choice than I did before when I learned programming that that's why I would definitely go for a programming language that supports all the programming constructs that you need to learn programming. Uh, after choosing the programming language, I would learn the very basics programming constructs, variables, if else statements, you know, uh, stuff that is common to more every programming language or programming in general, instead of focusing on you know, learning the same things in different programming languages, I would master all these concepts in one programming language, be it Python or JavaScript or Java or C Sharp, any high level programming language will do. Then I would also solve five or six problems for each programming language. Now, uh, I don't know how it is elsewhere, but, but in India, there's a certain obsession with a certain type of programs like uh, programs that generate uh, pyramids of stars or, you know, so there's this whole uh, too much time spent on few things. Instead, I would not solve, you know, more than five or six problems of one category, say if else, five or six problems, for loops, five or six problems, uh, exception handling or file handling, five or six problems. And then I would learn how to mix and match all these concepts to create small projects and not really get stuck with the same kind of problems again and again and again. Another thing that a lot of people miss out is um, they try to learn it, but then uh, you know they leave it at that. I suggest uh, an approach by Richard Feynman, who is a Nobel laureate. So what he used to say is, if you want to understand a topic completely, then try to explain it to a child. So if you have learned how to use for loops, then think about how you would approach explaining for loops to a little child, uh, because then it will help you dig in, you know, okay, what exactly is a for loop? How do I explain it to someone who does not have the background? Then it will clarify your concepts. I've always found that trying to teach something, it helps uh, my learning as well. Another thing that I would do differently, uh, or you know, if I had to start from scratch is build tiny personal projects. What happened uh, in my case was, I spent a lot of time on theory, and suddenly when you know, the requirement for the minor and major projects in college started, I started scrambling for ideas, and there was this huge jump from learning variables and if statements to doing you know, big projects. So the learning curve was really huge, and I, I've, I'm not very happy with the major and minor projects that I did in college. Now, uh, if I had to do that differently, then I would build small projects like a tic-tac-toe game or you know, a to-do list while I'm learning these variables and uh, for loops. So I would go projects and learning in tandem this time so that when I build those bigger projects, if I'm interested in machine learning, then I should have learned uh, you know, uh, libraries like SciPy or NumPy before. I would also do a lot of experimentation. So maybe you know, uh, two or three months I would try competitive programming, two or three months I would try web development using uh, Django and Flask. Maybe the next few months I would try machine learning. So I would learn about libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and SciPy. Basically experiment with the different fields. Uh, you know, I would have built uh, a portfolio uh, website because I feel that uh, that's something I still don't get time for. And you know, I feel that uh, you should have a website of your own. Even it does not need to be fancy, but a, a really a home for you know, all your little projects where you can demonstrate them to the world. That way you'll also learn to deploy projects. I feel I wasted a lot of time or uh, say, you know, the education system in which uh, I learned programming wasted a lot of time. Uh, C in first year of college, then, uh, you know, C++ in second year. Uh, I, I really feel a lot of momentum was lost in the process. Don't let that happen to you. Momentum is everything when you learn to code. So make sure that, you know, you start with a plan and execute that plan. Be disciplined, something that I would have done differently or I would do if I was 
learning to code now is I would create a full curriculum for myself before st I started to learn. That is because, uh, you know, uh, we get stuck in analysis paralysis. What should I learn next? Instead, if you create uh, right from day one, do your research, say day one, day two, day three, day four, have that discipline for 60 days or 90 days or 120 days, then, you know, there's this something that you have to achieve every day and that will keep you in discipline. And maybe we will publish uh, this kind of uh, syllabus uh, from programming someday. I, I hope that will be helpful. And uh, yes, few things I've talked about in this video. Uh, I hope they were helpful and I'll see you in the next one.